Hello. Uh, I'm going to backtrack a bit today. So I've been talking about the puja. Um, and I've talked about each of the verses of the puja in the previous videos. And today I want to talk a bit about the, um, the precepts, the five precepts that I referred to. So I talked a bit about, um, about the going for refuge, the, the way that we chant um, to the Buddha, for refuge I go, to the Dharma, for refuge I go, to the Sangha, for refuge I go. And I said something about how we repeat that. So for the second time and for the third time, we go for refuge to each of um, Buddha, Dharma and Sangha. And I've always found that rather rather lovely, the fact that we repeat that and say for the, for the second time, for the third time, because it reminds me of how much we need reminding. You know, we don't just go for refuge and then it all automatically happens because our emotions don't really work like that. You know, we keep having to um, reiterate. So immediately I'm reminded of um, the scene in Oliver Twist where uh, Nancy wants Bill to tell her that he loves her. And he says something like, well, of course I do. I lives with you, don't I? And, um, you know, that, that says something really important. It's like, well, unless we say something, unless we verbalise it, um, how's anybody to know? And within the puja, what we're doing is we're sharing in a spiritual community, you know, our deepest intentions and desires. And we are stating those and when we chant the refuges and precepts we're we're saying those aloud and that makes a difference you know if you don't tell someone that you love them they're not going to know why should they just assume it and it's similar with um turning towards the dharma in a way we've got to act it out we've got to verbalize it it's no it's no good sitting and reading a book and thinking yeah I agree with that yeah that makes a lot of sense you know um it's like what are we going to do about it <laughs> what, what are we doing about it so this is very important and um well the, with the um five precepts or if you're ordained it's ten precepts so with the five precepts we can take these qualities very much for granted, you know, it's like, oh, here we are saying them again, you know, with open-handed generosity, I purify my body and so on. Uh, we're saying these, but, you know, do we really take them on board? Do we really um, believe that they are well worthy of us saying again and again, reminding ourselves of what we're of how we're trying to change our behaviour. So, um, I think one of the things I quite like in Buddhism, and I know some people find it really difficult, is uh, the repetition. You know, if you read the Pali Canon, if you read the earliest um, suttas that were written down um, sometime after the Buddha died, there's a lot of repetition in the Pali Canon. He goes on and on and on repeating things exactly in the same way. But, you know, what it does is it penetrates, you know, it starts to drop in. Um, if we can uh, be have our ears open and our heart open, uh, we, can, we can reflect more deep, deeply by repetition. And that's one of the reasons that I like learning texts off by heart, because... In order to learn it, I have to repeat it hundreds of times. Sometimes people say to me, oh, you must have a very good memory. Well, I haven't got a good memory. You know, I just repeat and repeat and repeat. And it's not parrot fashion. It's actually, it allows things to really drop in. So, you know, how many times, if we've been practicing for a while, have we said those, those refuges and those precepts? Have we declared those? Have we said, you know, um, that we want to be practicing in that way? And it should never become automatic. We need to really take that on board. They sound so simple, so obvious. And yet, 
it's not so easy to put them into practice. So I don't know about you, but you've probably had this experience. You know, I remember once I was doing the Meta Bhavna and, you know, I was halfway through the Meta Bhavna and the doorbell went and immediately I thought, oh, damn, you know, why is the doorbell going? I'm in the middle of meditating. You know, how how bizarre, how ironic. There I am doing the Meta Bhavna and somebody has kindly come to deliver something at the door and immediately, um, you know, I had this this aversion this immediate response of aversion. So we might know how we'd like to relate to the world and to other people, but we don't, you know, we don't always do that. So these five precepts um, are training principles, as we know, you know, they're not commandments. Um, although we can treat them a, a, as that, um, but we have to find our own way of practicing them. So um, the first one, which of course is with deeds of loving kindness, I purify my body. Um, I don't want to talk about these precepts in a very obvious way. So just to say, it's it is pretty obvious that um, kindness is the most fundamental. Um, precept kindness is the most fundamental it encompasses wisdom and compassion you know if we can only be a bit kinder and that is something I think about quite a lot because you know I have to admit I, I don't think I'm the, the kindest person some people seem to have a natural capacity to um, to be very caring to look out for other people um, yeah, so, you know, it's something I have to work on, uh, to be kind. Hopefully I'm a lot kinder than I was 30 years ago, uh, after all this time of practice, but, um, yeah, I don't consider myself a naturally kind person. And it's, a uh, well, it's, it's fundamental to, to our practice. Uh, and so is the second one, you know, with open-handed generosity, I purify my body. Uh, generosity comes up again and again and again um, in Buddhism. And, and it's so basic that, um, you know, if you look at any images of, um, of what you imagine a Buddhist to be, so, yeah, I'm very struck how sometimes people walk into the Buddhist centre and say, um, oh, well, where are the Buddhists? So, you know, we'll say, yeah, we're practising as a Buddhist. And they're very disappointed because they want somebody in a robe with a bowl, basically, um, which uh, you'd be pretty frozen and probably very hungry if you tried to do that in this country. But um, But the symbol of that kind of simplicity and that kind of renunciation is very important, actually. Uh, in terms of a demonstration of ge generosity in a way I think this ties in with renunciation you know there is no spiritual life if there's no renunciation and it, it's the flip side of generosity it's like we're so used to getting and having and protecting ourselves with a lot of um yeah, in the way we're looking for security and we think that by having a lot of things and setting ourselves up in that way, um, we're going to somehow protect ourselves. But of course, um, what we're needing to do is shed. Uh, and by, by giving things away, by being generous, um, and, well, as you know, I mean, I've talked a bit about generosity in terms of, at the moment, with the shutdown, the Buddhist Centre badly needs um, badly needs our help, and hopefully we're all trying to help in the best way we can. But um, certainly financially, it needs help, and we can all think of um, taking out a standing order, um, and yeah, increasing a standing order if we've got one. So um, some people have been very generous. And that's, that's really wonderful. And if you can be generous, fantastic. So um, coming back to the precepts again, uh, 
That third one is beautiful, isn't it? With stillness, simplicity and contentment, I purify my body. But I've already talked for some time and I think I'm going to carry on tomorrow if I've got the internet, um, which I might not have. But anyway, because I also want to talk about the um, part of the precepts that says I purify my body you know what what exactly does that mean and how, how do we do that through those precepts so I'm going to leave it there and I hope I've said something of uh, interest and I'll see you soon bye for now <laughs>